welcome to the, uh, this afternoon's session. My name is Eva Poole. I am president of PLA with the American Library Association. Please welcome Ms. Alice Walker. I was thinking coming here about what I would like to share with you there are many things I think some of you know about my own history with libraries. That there was a public library in my hometown, uh, Eatonton, Georgia. And I first learned of it when I turned 50. Uh, and that was because one of my nieces uh, was there doing storybook hour with some of the children. But that is one of the horror stories of segregation in our country, that many people of color had no idea that there was a public library. And if they had stumbled upon it and gone into it, they would not have been welcomed. So this has been uh, a very terrible uh, burden uh, to feel that even to gain knowledge by reading was not something that people of color were expected uh, to want, to deserve, or to have. However, in my high school, there was a library, and there was a wonderful librarian whose name was Mrs. McLaughlin. Her husband was the principal, Mr. McLaughlin. And, you know, who knew why they were called McLaughlin? <laughs> you remember how it was always so mysterious, how we got our last names? They just happened. So anyway, there they were. I think they were of, uh, they were also very light-skinned black people. So on their uh, mother's side, they probably had uh, ancestry from Scotland. So Mrs. McLaughlin, what I hear even to this moment is her saying to us, students, this is a library. You must be quiet. <laughs> And she would be going around, you know, putting the books back in the shelves and talking to us in a whisper. And what I was thinking is how much I loved that small library. We had no new books, but the ones that were donated and the ones that somehow managed to find their way to us were very well loved and we were very happy to have them. But I was thinking also that Part of my nature is the love of peace and the love of quiet. So the library was just a haven for me, that little library. And her going around, if there was any noise, saying, this is a library, be quiet. She became an angel of the library. She became an angel in the way that you feel angels around you, <clears throat> or spirits, or whatever that is, when you go into a deep forest and there's also quiet. Not all forests are quiet, though. I have to say that I discovered in the Amazon that it was one of the noisiest places I had ever been. <laughs> all the creatures talking and screaming at once. But some forests, like the Redwood Forest near where I live in California, those are very quiet. And that is what the library was for me. It was a grove of trees. It was a place to go for refuge. It was a place to, to dream and to travel because of course, what you offer. And you know, it's true. I don't think I've ever heard a bad story about a librarian. You know, you hear terrible things about the people who hire and fire librarians. <laughs> but you do not hear bad stories about librarians, you know, themselves. I mean, even if I had gone to that library, the public library in Eatonton, Georgia, and I encountered the librarian there, it's possible that even under an imposed order that she not let me into the library, she might have been kind. And this is what I hope, because that is part of what education is for. That is why you have libraries, to teach expansion of being, to teach um, compassion, to teach understanding. It is only when people are informed 
that they can grow the essential qualities that we need to have in our democracy or in um, you know any other area of life where we want everyone to have a share of what is available.